I preach in the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who could have imagined that we would be meeting this way? Just over two weeks ago, we were together in the church, and we were just beginning to learn about this virus, and now it seems like the whole world is adjusting to a new way of life. We're curbing the spread of what we're coming to know as the COVID pandemic. Two weeks ago, it seemed like a distant threat. And now I think most every one of us knows at least one person who has been deeply touched by this virus on a really profound level. So we're hearing in the, on the TV and reading in the newspaper here in Michigan, Detroit and Oakland County and the surrounding region is one of the hardest hit areas in our whole country. The schools and the highways, the churches, so many businesses are closed. Supplies are short, especially the medical supplies. We hear this a lot from Sarah Troyer, who's one of our physicians, Alan Tom, and others. And good on Janie, uh, Janie, I'm sorry, a member of our community who's helping to make masks for our Beaumont doctors and nurses. Those of you who have to work, bless you. And we pray for your safety. Most of us are at home, working from home. And it's so good to see you here, but it's so hard to be apart. I don't know about you. I'm sorry, I'm just being vulnerable. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but what has helped me so much in this last week, as things have intensified, is to see people outside walking six feet apart. It's still there. I wait for the mail delivery every day because I'm just so glad to see her, <laughs> to see people, to see you on Zoom. <laughs> this wonderful technology on Facebook that's connecting us with faces and pictures and encouragement. When I've been afraid or just needed to process this world this week, I've called people. I called my friend Lisa in Wyoming. I called my friends and family in Colorado last night. I called my parents, my mom and stepfather in Arizona. I've called so many of you and you've called me. We're calling each other and encouraging each other and keep doing that. But as grateful as I am for this technology, and even now I find myself looking around the perimeter of this screen and I see the faces, but I'm really looking for the lens, <laughs> the little dot, the little white dot. It's on the top of my screen. Sometimes I lose track of it and then I have to find it and say, where is it? Where is that camera? Because I want to get closer to it. I want to get closer to you. It's so good to see you, but I'd rather be there. I'd rather that you were right here. We all feel that way. We'd rather that we were face to face when we're having really hard vulnerable conversations that we've shared this week. Like, what happens if I get sick? I want so much to help, so many of you said. I want there to be there for my parent who's in assisted living. I want to be right there with my loved one who's in the hospital. I want to be at St. John's volunteering. I want to help, but I can't. I want to help my kids. I want to be both a parent and a teacher. I want to help them feel safe, but I don't know how. And how long is this going to continue? Is God testing us? No, I do not believe that. Is God punishing us? Some have asked. No, I really do not believe that. But we get to ask the questions. We get to feel the feelings. Why is God allowing us this to happen? 
I've heard that question a lot this week. Why is God allowing this to happen? And when we ask that question, we're getting closer to probably the deepest question. And it's one of the reasons that I love this gospel reading from John 11 that was appointed today. Who knew that it would be appointed on this day? But here it is, a story about Jesus and a man named Lazarus who has died, and the man's two sisters, Mary and Martha. And these three siblings were probably very close friends of Jesus because they're mentioned several times in the Gospels. He stays in their home regularly. They're that kind of friends. And when we start this story, Jesus, Lazarus is sick. And so the sisters send for Jesus, but Jesus delays coming to them. And in the meantime, Lazarus dies. And then when Jesus does come, the sisters come out of the house to find Jesus. We have to remember these are two very different people, Mary and Martha, with different temperaments and dispositions. One is a doer, one is a contemplative, one is an extrovert, one is an introvert but they both come at him with the same question. Where were you? Why did you allow this to happen? First Martha and then Mary say the same words. Jesus, if you had been here, right here, my brother would not have died. Where were you? Where are you, God? I want you, we want you right here, right now. Show up, help us. I love the truth of this story, the humanity of the people in it, because there's no false religion in this story anywhere. There's no pretending, there's no stiff upper lip, there's no tr people trying not to cry. There's no everything happens for a reason kind of religion in this story. It's just raw truth. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. And so hear me, St. John's, hear me, all of you listening. This is so important. You get to feel your feelings. You get to name them. You get to stop and say, what is it that I am feeling right now? Is it anger? Is it fear? Am I sad? Am I mad? Am I worried? We get to feel the disappointment right now. Our kids that are missing out on the rhythms of life, missing out on trips and sports teams and proms and play dates, they get to feel mad and sad and disappointed. People who've had to cancel or postpone major events in their lives, people in our own St. John's family who've had to postpone their wedding, can you imagine? or graduations and baptisms. And we get to feel really sad about these losses. People in our faith community who are bringing new babies into the world, who are facing illness or who are facing surgery in the midst of this dangerous environment, we get to feel overwhelmed and afraid. We get to feel self-protective. For the people who are symptomatic or who have tested positive for COVID, you get to feel the feelings. Where are you, God? I need you here right now. We don't know how to do this. We've never been through a world pandemic before. And stuffing down our feelings or trying to be brave in the face of all this uncertainty is never required of us. Trust the science. Follow the pro protocols for safety, please. And feel your feelings. Ask for help. Receive care from others. Acknowledge what it is that you are longing for and then speak your truth. You can say it to each other. You can say anything, everything to God. You don't have to hold anything back. Even and especially your feelings of anger and fragility and disappointment and fear. Now, we know the end of the story, the Lazarus story. 
We know that Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead and calls him out of the tomb and returns him to his community. You unbind him and let him go, Jesus says to us. And that is the big story in one way or, or another that makes its way through all of our scriptures. Remember, God parts a Red Sea and the people who've been in slavery in Egypt go into the promised land. That's the end of the story. In the story that Will read today from the prophet Ezekiel, all of the people of Israel are in exile and they've lost their king and their temple and their land. And they cry out, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost and we are completely cut off. Social distancing. Could we get any closer to the scriptures than that? And yet in this story, God sends a vision of new life and breath coming to restore them, to raise them up and to bring them home. We know the end of the story. We know that Lazarus does get risen from the tomb. We know that Jesus does raise, get raised from the dead. It's the promise that St. Paul speaks to us that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. In the story of all of human history, we move from despair to hope, from darkness to light, from captivity to freedom, from brokenness to healing, from death to life. This pandemic will not have the last word. This will end. We know the end of the story. That is our story. And we see glimpses of it even now. And we can hold on to that knowledge and hope even now. But before we end, I want us to go back to the middle of the story, the story about Mary and Martha and Lazarus. The sisters come to Jesus and they speak their deepest truth. Where were you? I need you. My heart is broken. I am hurting. And look at what Jesus does. Even though he knows the end of the story, he stops what he is doing. And he meets them in their grief right where they are in their despair. And he weeps with them. It says in John, when Jesus saw Mary weeping and those who came with her were also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Another translation I found said, and I love this one, he was cut in the deepest place of his heart. And Jesus says, where have you laid him? And they say, Lord, come and see. And then it says, Jesus began to weep. Jesus wept. The Son of God weeps. Right now, right here, in all of our anxiety and fear, Jesus weeps with us, sits with us, stays with us, feels this with us, goes through this with us. We don't know how the next few days or the next weeks or how this spring or this summer is going to unfold. But let's let today be today. Today, let's have a truth-telling conversation with Jesus. And today, let's hold on to the knowledge that Jesus is right here, right here, in the present tense, in the physical now, weeping with you, weeping with me in all of our worry and fear and moving us in ways that we can't yet even ask or imagine towards hope and healing and new life. Friends, continue to care for each other. Stay connected. Feel your feelings. And say your prayers and wash your hands. <laughs> And ask for help and receive help. Receive care when it's offered to you and acknowledge what it is you're longing for. And know this, that we serve a risen Christ who will join us all together again. You are beloved. Peace always. <laughs>